This presentation is going to give an overview of the life of Sir Philip Sidney. This is Philip Sidney's father, Sir Henry Sidney, and he was appointed Lord Deputy of Ireland when Sidney was about 11 years old and was directly involved in violent oppression of the Irish and confiscation of their land. So, um, like Spencer, um, uh, Sidney himself was, was uh, part of, although indirectly, uh, the colonial occupation of Ireland. This is his mother, Mary Dudley, Lady Sidney. She was lady-in-waiting, basically a servant to Queen Elizabeth I. Uh, her brother, Robert Dudley, was a prominent and powerful courtier who held tremendous influence over the queen and uh, wanted to marry her, in fact, although he was never able to convince her to, to, uh, to get married. And Henry and Mary had seven children, and Philip Sidney was the eldest son. Born in 1554, and here's his sister, Mary Sidney. Uh, later, she became the Countess of Pembroke through through marriage. She was his younger sister, quite quite well known. Uh, in her own right as a writer and patron of many important poets of the time. She translated uh, biblical psalms with Sidney. In fact, she translated more than, than he did, uh, corresponded with him about his writing, and she oversaw the publication of his works after his death. Sidney was born in 1554 at the manor of Penshurst in Kent. In 1572, he travels to France as part of an embassy to negotiate marriage, the marriage of Queen Elizabeth I to the Duke of Alençon. Uh, this, this marriage never occurred. Um, he was Catholic. Uh, Queen Elizabeth I, of course, a Protestant. And while he is in Paris, uh, he was there during the St. Bartholomew, Bartholomew's Day Massacre. There's a complicated story behind this event, but, but basically uh, French Protestants um, called Huguenots were uh, assembled in Paris to witness the marriage of Queen Catherine de Medici's daughter, Margaret of Valois, to Henry of Navarre, a Protestant. So this event was conceived as a way to reconcile Protestants and Catholics, but uh, Catholic mobs violently attacked Protestants in the streets of Paris, uh, killing many, um, and this violence spread across the country and uh, tens of thousands of Protestants were murdered. Uh, this event uh, reinforced Sidney's staunch Protestant prejudice against Catholics that he had throughout his life. Here's a painting that shows some of those events. In 1575, Sidney meets and falls in love with 14-year-old Penelope Devereux. He was 21 at the time. Uh, with the support of her father, uh, Penelope and Philip are engaged, but then her father dies in 1576, and those marriage plans uh, fall through, and Penelope would eventually wind up marrying a man named Robert Rich in 1581. Um, his failed courtship with Penelope is the subject of his sonnet sequence, Astrophil and Stella, and careful readers will notice sly references, um, biographical references throughout the poem, like, for example, in Sonnet 37. Uh, there are several references to the name Rich uh, in there. And that's just one example. There are many. In 1577, Sidney's sister Mary weds Henry Herbert, 
uh, the second Earl of Pembroke. In 1580, Sydney's opposition to the Queen's marriage to Alençon um, reaches a, a uh, sort of a treacherous point for him. Um, he has made Queen Elizabeth unhappy with his opposition, and so he decides to withdraw from the court for a while and resides with his sister Mary at her house, um, uh, at, at her place, Wilton House. And while there, he composes many poems and completes a long prose romance called Arcadia. In 1583, he marries Frances Walsingham, uh, the daughter of the Queen's Secretary of State. In 1585, after signing the Treaty of Nonsuch with Dutch rebels, the Queen appoints Sydney governor of Flushing in the southwestern Netherlands. Flushing was a city that had recently won its independence from Catholic Spain. Uh, King Philip II of Spain ruled much of the territory in the Netherlands. And as part of the Treaty of Nonsuch, which is named after the Tudor Palace where the treaty was signed, England committed to establishing a garrison of soldiers to reinforce the Dutch rebels. And Sydney served as governor of Flushing under the general governorship of his uncle, Robert Dudley. Not long after his arrival in Flushing, um, Sydney is shot in the leg fighting against Spanish forces at the Battle of Zitfin. And after a long and, and uh, difficult um, period of illness because of that wound, he dies at the age of 31. The picture you see here shows Sydney um, injured on his horse and someone is offering him water and uh, he, he declines the water and says to, to give it to this other soldier, a subordinate soldier, who is more grievously injured. We don't know if that story is really true, just part of the legend of Philip Sidney. After his death, none of his work was actually published in his lifetime. After his death, uh, Sidney's uh, revisions to his Arcadia, which he had written, uh, which he'd completed in the early 1580s, appears in print for the first time uh, in 1590. Here's the title page for it. And then in 1591, we get the first print edition of his sonnet se sequence, Astrophil and Stella. And that is Sidney's horse that rode in his funeral procession. I'm not quite sure who that is riding it, but that's a that's a, a portrayal of Sidney's horse from his funeral procession. And that is the end of the presentation on Sir Philip Sidney.